Hello everyone, this is Robin Recap. In this issue, let's take a look at a legendary story about a dog. Buck is Judge Miller's dog from Santa Clara County. Living on sunny estates in the south, Buck, relying on its owner's favor, uses its sturdy body to destroy items at home. Therefore, Buck is often locked outside the door by his owner for reflection and reflection. However, with the arrival of the gold rush, the fate of many dogs and Buck has also changed. It is said that someone has discovered gold in the Arctic region, plus strong promotion from major newspapers. Countless gold miners are going to the Arctic to try their luck. The demand for sled dogs has also skyrocketed, and dogs like Buck with a strong physique and thick fur are particularly suitable. So Buck was targeted by a gambler. Judge Miller's birthday. The mischievous Buck ruined the table of dishes. Buck was punished for spending the night on the porch again and he repented seriously. The gambler took the opportunity to lure Buck outside the estate with food and then locked it into a wooden crate. Buck looked through the cracks at the estate that had been living for many years. Buck doesn't know where his future destiny will go. Afterwards, Buck was moved to the train. The wooden box was finally opened. Buck ran out to attack the man in red in front of him. Unexpectedly, Buck was knocked down by the stick in the opponent's hand. The man in red is a dog trainer. He wants Buck to understand the stick rule. Buck doesn't have a chance to deal with a person holding a stick. Only obediently obedient and obedient. But he didn't give up resisting. When there was no one around, Buck struggled to break free from the rope, opened the door, and ran out. But with it came deep despair. Buck was on a ship. The ship will arrive at Skagway, Alaska. This is the entrance to an uninhabited land and a must-have place for gold seekers. Buck was pulled off the boat by the dog vendor. When Buck stepped on the soft snow, the body instinctively shrank back. At this moment, snowflakes floated in the sky. Buck, born in the south, saw snow for the first time. Curiously licking and chasing, the dog vendor didn't lock Buck properly. Because of a harmonica, Buck and John had a blind date. John is about to board the ship to Dawson, but he's not a gold digger, he just wants to find a peaceful place to heal his heartbreak. After Buck was taken back by the dog vendor, Buck waited with other dogs for the buyer. Perot is a local postman, and his sled team needs to add two more dogs. He immediately fell in love with the tall Buck. After Buck was bought back by Perot, Buck met eight other members of the sled team led by Husky. Their task is to deliver the mail to Dawson Town 500 miles away. Before Buck could figure out the situation, the sled team set off. It can only crawl and be dragged by the team. Suddenly Buck saw a snow white rabbit on the roadside, instinctively wanting to run past. As a result, the entire team was pulled down the hillside. Fortunately, Perot had a kind heart and he talked reason to Buck. Now they are a community tied to a rope, so Buck must listen to the command. Buck seemed to understand and adapted a lot after setting out again. It's just that Buck, who always takes good care of himself, has never done such hard work. Tired to the ground all day long, in the middle of the night, an unprecedented cold woke Buck up. Buck walked into the tent and moved Perot's girlfriend out. Make room for oneself. Of course, Buck was quickly kicked out. Exposed to cold and piercing snowfield, Buck's inner big black wolf suddenly emerged. Some primitive force in Buck's body is quietly recovering. Buck has a strong adaptability, quickly learned to sleep in the snow pit like a companion. But the sled team is not as united and friendly as it appears. The leading dog Husky has become accustomed to being extremely strong and bullying the weak, often snatching food from other dogs. Even other dogs dare not resist. Buck saw this and gave up his fish to his companions. When stopping to rest the next day, Husky monopolizes the water source and prevents his companions from drinking. Buck, who has been living in the human world for a long time, has broken through the ice layer elsewhere. Buck gathered his friends over. After a while, Buck had fully adapted to becoming a sled dog and gained confidence and happiness from it. This day, the snow prying team will pass through the frozen lake surface. When Perot's girlfriend was exploring the way ahead, the sudden rupture of the ice layer caused her to fall into an ice cave, and the rushing water below the ice quickly rushed her towards the distance. Buck immediately rushed over and jumped into the ice cave to catch up with the woman, breaking through the ice layer from another location and rescuing her. However, as he was about to land, Buck was swept away by the rapids. Perot was extremely anxious but helpless. Fortunately, Buckman swam up on his own. Perot was moved to tears by Buck, and her girlfriend was also grateful to Buck. Buck's favor made Husky very jealous. It feels threatened by its leadership position. Later in the night, Buck found a snow rabbit and quickly chased after it. My companions followed up when they heard the noise, but Buck caught the rabbit and let it go. Buck just enjoyed the chase. Unexpectedly, Husky suddenly jumped out and bit the rabbit's throat, and then launched a challenge against Buck. Buck doesn't want to cause trouble. Step by step, 
back down. Buck was repeatedly thrown to the ground by Husky. It wasn't until Buck fainted that Husky stopped attacking. The members dare not confront the leader, they can only silently walk away. Only one brave dog barked fiercely at Buck. The awakened Buck once again saw the big black wolf in his heart. His primitive wildness was stimulated. When Husky pounced again, Buck dodged and accurately bit the other person's spine. Throw Husky from a high altitude to the ground. And then he stepped on Husky's feet. The defeated Husky walked dejectedly towards the blizzard. Husky didn't come back. Buck rightfully stood in the position of the leading dog. Perot admits that Buck's sled pulled very well. But it doesn't mean that Buck can lead the entire team well. Buck's attitude was resolute and he refused to move a step. Perot can only drag this big guy to the end of the team. But what Perot didn't know was, Buck has long relied on his good character and exceptional strength, established credibility within the team. Except for Buck, no dog dares to be the lead dog. Perot could only fulfill Buck's wishes. The fact proves that Buck's excellence far exceeds Perot's imagination. He has a strong sense of cohesion. Coordinate the team like only one dog running. And he has quick thinking and quick action. Buck encountered an avalanche the first time he led the team. Perot commanded a run away from the snow-capped mountains. Buck grew up in the human world. Buck has learned to listen to human voices. But this time he decided to follow his heart. Leading the team through the cave at the foot of the mountain. Buck's precise judgment helped the team avoid the avalanche disaster. And for the first time, Perot delivered the mail before the post office closed. Perot proudly told Buck, they're not shipping mail, they're shipping hope and love. Buck looked at the people holding family letters with dirty eyes, suddenly discovered that he was actually homeless. Judge Miller's grand estate has become blurred in his memory, and the big black wolf in his heart is leading him towards the distant land of Aurora. For the next period of time, under the leadership of Buck, Perot's sled team set a record-breaking itinerary. Whenever they reach Dawson Town, will attract people's rave praise for Buck's dog team. However, Perot received a notification from the government. Tell him to sell his dog and go back. The reason is that Dawson Town is about to use telegrams. The government cancelled his email route. Perot reluctantly said goodbye to Buck. So Buck and his companions returned to the hands of the dog vendor once again. Friends gathered around Buck, waiting for the next owner to appear. Little Beard is one of the many gold seekers. He has seen the outstanding performance of Buck's sled team, so I didn't hesitate to spend a lot of money on them. But Little Beard and the three of them carried a lot of luck luggage like they were on vacation. Buck and his friends tried their best but couldn't pull it off. Little Beard thought Buck was slacking off and raised a stick to Buck. This scene happened to be caught and stopped by John. He told Little Beard that it wasn't a pack of dogs who didn't work hard, it was a sled that froze. John saw the map in Little Beard's hand, knowing that he is preparing to head to the legendary Golden River. John advised him to wait for the spring thaw before leaving, because half of that journey is on the river surface. Now that spring is approaching, the ice and snow have begun to melt. The entire sled team is in danger of sinking into the river bottom. Little Beard refused, thinking that John wanted to grab gold faster than him, hurrying to die. However, the snow track is soft and the resistance increases. Buck and his companions were struggling to move forward while also being whipped. John was worried about Buck's situation and couldn't rest assured. Immediately set off to chase Little Beard. Due to severe physical overdraft, Buck collapsed weakly to the ground. Little Beard was very angry and he was preparing to shoot Buck. Fortunately, John arrived in time and saved Buck. Buck slept in bed for two days to regain his strength. Buck didn't see the team members he felt very lonely. Whether to go or stay, John makes him feel free. Then John went to the tavern alone to buy wine. Unexpectedly, he was attacked by Little Beard. After Buck was rescued by John, the group of dogs had no head, and the other dogs also ran away one after another. Little Beard found John to avenge him. Upon seeing this, Buck rushed into the tavern and knocked down Little Beard. Little Beard shouted that Buck had rabies and wanted to shoot Buck. The crowd found a gun on Little Beard and threw him directly out of the tavern. Because guns are strictly prohibited in the tavern, John suffered the pain of losing his son because he couldn't bear it. He numbs himself with alcohol every day. Buck realized that alcohol was harmful, so he knocked over his glass. Or hide the entire bottle of wine in the snow. Under Buck's companionship and supervision, John also gradually got rid of his dependence on alcohol. When spring arrives and the glaciers melt, John found the map and remembered that his son was particularly fond of adventure stories and fantasizing about exploring the wilderness on the other side of the mountain. So John planned to fulfill his son's wish. Go to an uninhabited place outside the map. Take a real adventure. He and Buck boarded a canoe and sailed downstream along the beautiful scenery. Two days later, as they passed through a turbulent section of water, the canoe was damaged by the rocks, so they had to choose to walk. Meanwhile, 
Little Beard came to John's cabin with a gun to avenge him. He saw the mark left by John on the map. It was the legendary location of the Golden River, so he quickly chased after it. John led by Buck, discovered a small wooden house in the mountain forest. From the sand screen inside the house, it can be inferred that this should be the place where the gold miners lived. The next day, while taking a bath in the river, John accidentally discovered gold. Buck is also helping. Suddenly, Buck saw a shadow flash past. With permission, Buck curiously chased into the forest. So that shadow is a beautiful wolf. Buck showed friendliness. But the white wolf ignored and ran away. From then on, there seemed to be a sound deep in the forest that kept calling Buck. It aroused his longing and made him restless. Buck ran freely in the wilderness. Above is the vast sky, below is the primitive land. At the same time, his desire for the mysterious call grew stronger and stronger. One day, the wolf pack was preparing to hunt a pig across the river. A wolf accidentally fell into the river. It held onto a tree and struggled to support it. The wolf pack is anxious, but there is no way. At this moment, Buck rushed over and forcefully hit the tree to the shore, saved the wolf in the water. From then on, the wolf pack accepted Buck. And Buck is a natural leader. He led the wolf pack to cleverly catch birds and fish. Buck's time to go home is getting late. John also felt Buck's changes. That day, he quietly followed into the forest. Seeing Buck living in harmony with the wolf pack, John knew that Buck had finally arrived at home. John is happy for Buck, and he also plans to go home. John only left a few pieces of gold and the rest was poured back into the river. He hopes Buck can come and say goodbye to him tomorrow morning. Buck returned to the forest feeling lost. He couldn't give up his feelings for John for a moment. However, things are unpredictable. That night, Little Beard found the wooden house. This time he's here to find gold. John was shot in the abdomen while fighting him. Buck heard the noise and rushed back quickly. Little Beard took out his stick and tried to make Buck submit to the stick rule. But Buck's wildness has been completely released. He gritted the stick fiercely and then pushed Little Beard into the sea of fire. When a shovel goes down, it's all his own ash. John leaned on Buck and never woke up again. Buck, who had no concern for humanity, returned to the forest forever. He became the leader of the wolf pack and married the white wolf to have children. Every summer, Buck would come to that valley to remember John, but now he's already his own master. I think the movie is pretty good. Treat the experience of this dog as the growth of a teenager. We'll understand the story. But when I think of dogs, their movements are all captured by human figures. I couldn't help but think about the scene on the set. Okay, that's all for this issue. Don't forget to subscribe if you like it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.